If you just can't get enough of the Best Friends podcast, be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at TBFCast. Like our page on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Best Friends Podcast. Subscribe to our new YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com and search for, you guessed it, the Best Friends Podcast. And as always, subscribe to our weekly show on iTunes and SoundCloud. And we'll be saying, did we just become best friends? Yup. What? Did we just become best friends? Yup. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Best Friends Podcast. I'm Justin. I'm Ben. I'm Lucky. And uh, I don't know what you guys got this week. Yeah. Did you play the theme music? Yeah. Do, do, do. Okay. Best Friends Podcast. This is our winging it episode, basically. I think it is. Yeah. Don't, Let's don't see say happens. that. That's a bad podcast. Eh? We're, we're a good one. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, there's, there's, a really lot of, out. there's a lot of yeah. structure. Well, there's like a, there's not a lot of big news, but there's a lot of little news. So it's kind of like what kind of little news? Yeah, what do you got? Well, there's the DC logo. I guess that's kind of big. Uh, um, I everyone mean, give their uh, numerical review of the logo. Yeah, the one that you posted where they fixed it, I would give like a solid eight. Yeah. And prior to that, I would give it like a four. <laughs> yeah. Really, two stars. So for context, for those that didn't see it. It's, you know what it needs, Justin? It needs two stars on it. Yeah, it's the, <laughs> yeah. It's the same. They, they put the review on it. It's the same. Of the original. Yeah, it's the same new logo, but just with two stars at the top and bottom. And, that, and they touched it. And for Ben, that doubles the value. Each star is worth yeah. a because it's Because it's a throwback to the 76. I, I, yeah, I know. But you know? It's, like a, it's like a muscle car. It's like, nope, this isn't the way it should look. Go back to the 76 model. Let's, yeah. put, let's put stripes on it. Now it's yeah. badass. Yeah, it could probably use some stripes too. <laughs> Did you 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 guys hear what Jim Lee said about it? Yeah, that it evokes like Go Batman, ahead. Superman, yeah. and Wonder Woman. Yeah, and then he gave the reasons where it's like the the angles on the some of the letters, like there's some cuts and stuff like that that are supposed to be reminiscent of the S. And then I don't know where he's going with this, but the WW for Wonder Woman is. Maybe because they're both two letters. <laughs> I think that's in the D and the C. There's like, you know. Some angles or something? Yeah. And then the Batman, just because it was a logo type, it looks kind of like it could be on a superhero's chest or something. Is that what he was saying there? Or maybe the there's like that dip between the D and the C. I don't C. think he even I... went into that much detail. I think that's from what we were saying, <laughs> trying to figure it out. I think he just said it's supposed to be reminiscent of no i no yeah when i read it that's kind of what he said those were those were what he went into oh okay yeah he said here's my favorite analysis of the logo was lucky was he he stared at the logo for six minutes (laughs) trying to see what was in there (laughs) <laughs> well, I read the Jim Lee thing, and I'm like, where? Uh, I don't see it. The, oh, I think the I see only the thing, thing I got read, out of not the, the one I read didn't have that much detail, but I see what you're reading now. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like one of those 3D images. Like if you just stare at it long enough, it pops out at you. Like, oh, <laughs> like a bad man. Guy. It's got to yeah. cross your eyes. The magic eye poster. Dude, if you do, if you turn it on its side, it does look like a little like what are those called? Those those Japanese um, cartoon character chibi or something like that. You guys know what I'm talking about? Nope. Man, I this wish is, you guys would. If you know what it is, run with it, but neither this, me. It's like chibi. I don't know. It's like chibi something, but it looks like, if you turn it sideways, it looks like a three-fourths view of Batman, like This chibi segment style. of the Best Friends podcast brought to you by Ben Thinks He Knows Something. <laughs> <laughs> chibi. I'm Googling brought to it. you by Ben Wondering Out Loud. <laughs> ben Wondering Out Loud. <laughs> Dude. That's 1983. <laughs> uh, that's my that's my follow up to explaining things, dumb things I said. Well, I think. Let me look this up. I think. The, well, okay. So my my uh, my numerical uh, review, I I'd probably give it like a seven. But I think it's one of those things that'll grow on me. Like I hated the old, not the old, but w- what they introduced with New Fifty Two with with the D kind of the peeled back and the thing, yeah, yeah, and the C behind it. I hated that, and it really grew on me, and I. I actually kind of like it now. Um, so, 
I think I, I think it'll I grow. I feel like I you. neither hate nor like it. Like I just didn't notice it, but it's not iconic. The 1976 one to me is iconic, and then the other ones I just don't really notice. Yeah, and and I agree with you. I mean, if uh, and and this will probably be on our YouTube page. We have a YouTube page now, which is uh, Progress for the Best Friends Podcast. But um, but yeah, I know. But uh, the timeline basically goes that DC slightly altered their logo like every three or four years on average up until 1976, and then they didn't touch it until 2005. Like they, it was good. Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> like it was like a 30 year logo. They're like, this is a really good logo. So I wish I'm I'm with you. Like I like the stars on it. I like the, um, um I th- you know, it's commonly referred to as the you know bold, what the though as logo. far as um. DC things they need to fix. It's probably the least of their worries. Just like <laughs> oh, the logo is is what what's driving this company in the ground. Not not the not the movies, movies or <laughs> we have to retcon our entire library of books. No, just the logo is what is what was doing. It. Yeah, I just want to say that's another thing Marvel has on them is the great logo. Great logo. Is it a great yeah. logo? It just says yeah. Marvel. Well, that it's just was the that words. Was, yeah, but it looks awesome. I mean, it's just it just is Marvel. I don't. And then don't the one before it was cool. like the big M with Marvel up top and comics kind of scribbled over top of that. I'll tell you what I like. Two great ones is in uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe how uh, the letters have like pages flipping. Oh, uh, on yeah, the, I love that. Like thing. laid over oh, the yeah. uh, the letters. Uh, I love yeah. it. I think that's awesome. Yeah. That's a cool logo yeah. to me. Yeah. The cinematic the, logo. The animated one. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Um, that's a Marvel win over, over DC. Just like the bold white on the red, I like it. Lucky, like what is Marvel and Netflix. The two favorite things. <laughs> the same, it's true. Same logo. Yeah, they're basically the same logo. Lucky, what's your numerical review on the DC logo? Eh, I mean, it's a logo. Um, I, I like Ben. It's four out of ten. Four. Yeah. It's not good. But maybe like what you said, maybe it'll it'll grow on you. I think it will. Once you see that on on, on a comic book, you'd be like, oh yeah, it looks cool. But also, like I said, it's neither going to bring me to nor drive me away from a comic. It's not not the thing that's, yeah. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head that that's the least of their worries right now. Like, they've got Rebirth coming up and... Their movies aren't very good, so like let's start. When's there. the first rebirth in June? No, is it- uh, next next Wednesday, uh, oh. May twenty fifth. We're six days out. Nice. Yeah, that's when rebirth launches, and we get Justice League. I think forty eight, which is going to have the Joker's true identity in it. That's coming out next week. Yeah. Oh shit, son! Still, <laughs> still in the works. Shit, son. I'm getting that one then. Okay. That's, yeah, you can start buying DC comics again next week. <laughs> I bought, I've been buying Batman. Just none of them came out this week. Well, right. right. So. Yeah, I bought. I, yeah, I'm with you. I bought the Batman books, but 50, 51 and fifty two, all because of you, Justin. DC, you can thank uh, Justin for bring me back to the Batverse. Yeah, they're. I'm sure the checks in the mail. I thought about <laughs> jumping onto it, but I got so much catching up to do with Marvel, and you guys got me onto Saga. Yeah, I'm like, man. And Letter How far Forty Four. I, I'm on. I'm looking into. Um, uh, my next purchase will be Volume Four. Oh, nice! nice. Oh, you're well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. You're trucking along. Are you buying yeah. them uh, hard copies or on Comicsology? Comicsology. Wow. I love it. I love Comicsology. I love it too much. I think. I was having like a real moral issue with it, and then I just <laughs> I kind of <laughs> popped my like... cherry with Civil War, and then I was like, I can't stop. You were like, hmm, electric bill or comicsology? <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was. Then he bought the bi- comicsology, and then the electric bill, the electric shut off. <laughs> and I yeah, watch I couldn't out. charge my phone to read. Yeah, no, uh, it was just you know the mom and pop shop style with the comic books. Like, yeah, you know, I don't know. Kind of feel bad not going in there and buying the hard copies. Well, but. I mean, I still do both because there's a lot of stuff in a comic book shop you just miss. Like, I, I don't know what it, I just like going in there and it's like my safe space. Just like go in there and stare at comics and I think when um, <laughs> they're yeah, like, I'm hey, compl- are you gonna buy anything? Yeah. You just come in here <laughs> yeah, and stare at yeah, yeah, just the, the books. You gotta buy something. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I abandoned all that. I just I love comicsology that much. I was just like, eh. I like this. Like, I could just be sitting anywhere. I feel like you haven't tried in a while. 
what going to buy pickup comics? Uh, it was about probably a year ago I started going and give I with my daughter. I think you need a better shop though. That, we did that a one in list. Streetsboro. No oh, he offense. doesn't go to the shop you go to. No, Ben lives south of me. Like no, yeah, I have to have a good shop. I wouldn't go if it was like a shitty shop. I mean, that would turn me off. Yeah, it's well, it, you like know, it's grown on me over the years because it's the one I've been going to my whole life. So I kind of like the guy. He's goofy and everything, but he's cool. Um, and it's like half jewelry. Like he buys and melts down and makes jewelry. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. It's not a dedicated comic book no, store. But so he is like... though. Like even though he does that to like supplement his, the love of his life, which is the comic <laughs> shop, he's like he's still a huge nerd. You know what I mean? He's you can go in there any day and talk to him about all this shit. And he's but... like, yeah, 24 karat and the diamonds. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, no, comic books. He's like, oh yeah, the other part of my yeah. business. Yeah, it does kind of suck because that's like a large part of his business. So if you go in to talk shop with him. Uh, he's always busy with other customers that are actually bringing him in money. So it's, I don't know, it's kind of a bummer. Hey, did you guys see the text where I sent you that chibi characters are real? And I was correct. And you guys sucked it. <laughs> yeah, I did. I don't, yeah. I, I deleted that exact text <laughs> message. Actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's I a real thing, myself, but I don't think really. that has, I don't think that has anything to do with, the DC logo, though. Well, <laughs> like, I, yes. no, I was saying, like, well, no, you guys were talking about is this how more you just stared at it comic for six, book shops, six minutes. Chibi characters. No, no, but uh, you were staring at the logo for six minutes. I did the same thing, and when I turned it sideways, I saw, like, a little chibi Batman. And I was like, is that what Jim Lee was talking about? Because if you turn to the side, the D looks like, I don't know, it looks like Batman a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's like looking at clouds. I see a dragon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to um, derail everything real quick. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. Mission thanks, accomplished. Guys. Thanks for allowing me to do that. <laughs> Mission report: May nineteenth, twenty sixteen. Derailed the show to talk about chibi characters. Ready to derail. Ready to derail. <laughs> Right. You give Ben code words like comic book store, gold smelting, <laughs> DC chibi, logo. chibi characters, chibi character. and chibi. he's like ready to derail. What the fuck is chibi, man? <laughs> um. So speaking of DC, uh, one of the big pieces of news uh, to come out this week was that Jeff Johns is going to kind of move over to a more prominent role in the cinematic universe of DC. And kind now, of, what was he? What was he prior? Was he the head creative at the comics? Yeah, he was chief creative officer of DC Comics. But I think here's the thing: like Marvel has their own studio, separate yeah. from any production studio. But DC always had Warner Brothers, though. Like well, that was their Disney. They're like one. They've always been one. So DC kind of had a leg up on Marvel because they never had to find someone else to uh, produce and distribute their movies because they always had Warner Brothers. Right. But but because of that though, I think yeah. Warner Brothers had too much too of much a, of a say. Yeah, too much of yeah. a creative interest in in the DC movies, and I think that um, they've kind of wised up. So like back, like if you look at Kevin Feige's resume, it starts off with the old X Men movie, which was distributed by Fox, um, Fantastic Four, which I think also was Fox, um, and and those movies were flubs. But it's Kevin Feige who's producing these amazing movies now, and so. What's the com- his teeth, kind of. Yeah, so what's the common denominator? The common denominator is that he got away from those other movie studios having a say in what those movies should look like. He made Marvel, you know, they started Marvel Studios, and he basically had exclusive control. And I've heard stories about him kind of power playing Disney, that he wasn't going to work for this guy, and he wanted Marvel Studios, even though it's owned by Disney, to be kind of its own little separate entity. Um, I'm just picturing him arguing with the Mickey Mouse from South Park. This is just like <laughs> secretly running to... <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you gotta make the ball guys. <laughs> and what about the guy doing? Oh, we're not gonna have a girl. <laughs> All right, Nikki, we'll change it to a guy. Oh, I, hate I think that, that was, mouse. yeah, not to get jump into that, but I think that was a bullshit reason to change it. Anyhow, well, so yeah, so Jeff Johns is is now gonna be co creative director of DC Films and. If you've read like any Jeff Johns books, particularly like Green Lantern Rebirth and his run on Justice League and things like that, he, I mean, the dude gets like hope and 
optimism and positivity in the DC Comics universe. Oh, so, damn, that's good. Yeah, I think it'll be a good uh, interview. Too bad this, was, this move wasn't um, kind of foreseen, or you know what I mean. It was. It seems reactionary. Well, listen to the bullshit that's going on. We got. We got. I mean, ultimately, we got like one bad movie. Right, I mean, I think yeah, we, that's true. I think we can all agree that Man of Steel was pretty good, and BVS was not so hot. Justin, I have the perfect analogy. Hit so, me. Um, Jeff Johns is like the uh, what's the White Green Lantern's name? What's his um, Hal Jordan? Hal, he's the Hal Jordan to the DC universe, and whereas before it was. Um, uh, Sinestro, when he was still the Green Lantern, he's the one that was running DC. <laughs> yeah. And now, now Hell Jordan's showing up. Save and now the day. Zack Snyder's just like, well, this isn't how we do things in my sector of the <laughs> space. <laughs> and what? What's, well, does anybody know what sector Green Lantern runs? Six. I don't know. Oh man, two Earth. one eight two one eight four. Okay. I was gonna say six one six, but I'm like, oh, that's Marvel. Nine oh nine oh two one oh. That's been my no, guess. No, incorrect. Damn Damn That's it. not even a comic book reference. Now you're going way <laughs> far away from us. Uh, Stop say, derailing! Did I say 2814? <laughs> I think so. Anyway, 2814. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a good move. And I think that, uh, you know, Ben Affleck's executive producing and... Jeff Johns is coming in, so I think you know we we talked about this after Batman versus Superman that likely Zack Snyder would not be kicked off, but he would be like, "Hey Zack, let's box. let's yeah, let's paint within the lines, box. buddy." Uh, so yeah, that'll be good stuff. Yeah, put that guy in Arkham Asylum, let him chill out for a little bit. <laughs> He's gone crazy. He's gone mad. Yeah, so he's still in charge of Justice League, right? So that could still turn out to be shit. <laughs> ben, we just talked about hope. optimism. Yeah, it was just, we just talked about hope and optimism. I know, but I'm just like I think I still believe that like uh, no, because here's Suicide what's going to happen. Yeah, but here's what's going to happen. Jeff Johns is effectively Zack Snyder's boss. And Zack Snyder's going to say, well, I think we should really make all the colors brown and muddy and disgusting. <laughs> and Jeff Johns is going to be like, go fuck yourself. Uh, that's not yeah, happening. That's <laughs> hilarious because like, even the actual Superman costume looks like the comic book one. It's the right color. And then they just muddle it up. For yeah. He's just like, why do we even bother? Like, what What the fuck? Like, ugh. So I recently rewatched Civil War. And then I also rewatched BVS. And, oh. and it is so jarring to see the airport fight scene between all the Marvel characters, including Spider-Man, who's very red, very blue, you know, a lot of primary colors going on there. And then you switch over and watch Batman versus Superman fighting at night in the Just, rain. You could barely see anything. Yeah, I'm like, wow. <laughs> also, that- like the, the fight scene is way more inventive and entertaining and um in in a civil war in BVS, they're um, so it's cool when Batman's fighting, and that's what I like about Captain America because he's usually like fighting, and it's like choreographed, maybe a little CGI sprinkled in there or something. But then when they're fighting um, Doomsday, it's just flying all over the place. Yeah. It's kind of like the end of um, Man of Steel. They're just crashing around and stuff. Yeah, like it's um, very kinetic, but like you don't really good word you, you see what's actually going on. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, someone I saw some, I and don't there's know. much less talking when they're fighting. Yeah, too. okay. So I saw like a tweet or somebody. Maybe you said it. I don't know. But like in Civil War, they're communicating with one another about how they should fight the other team. Yeah, coordinating. You get and a sense of how the team works. <laughs> Superman so. and Wonder Woman. I don't think speak one word to each other in the entire movie. You just get to look up Wonder Woman's skirt, and she kind of smirks at you. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not mad about that. Yeah, I'm not complaining. No, but. Yeah. So what else is going on this week? Is that it? <laughs> Did we do it? <laughs> this is our podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the um, shortest episode ever. Not that anybody cares, but they canceled Agent Carter. Womp womp. <laughs> and then they... <laughs> it's right. probably like the best show I'd never watched. In a, I it's, think I watched one episode. Yeah, Did you I watch feel it? Like it was a, I feel like it was kind of an overreach on 
on ABC's part. Yeah, I watched like the first season, and then I just kind of started falling off on the second. Um, because I heard it they, got better, but also again, I still didn't watch it. Like, it, I don't yeah, know. it did. But you know what? They they dropped the ball because it was the I don't know. I guess it was the forties, probably a little bit into the fifties. Um, and she's a woman in a powerful position, and the whole appeal of it originally was okay. Here's like the superhero sort of badass. She like starts Shield. She's the she's the um, you know she starts Shield, and here's how she has to navigate this world that's dominated by men. And they just it was like one episode of that, and then it was done. And that was kind of like a cool angle on it. And they did Say it's they like did Mad Men, but with spies and superheroes. Yeah, it, well, it was it was geared towards that like it was looking like you were going to get that and then it just kind of didn't go that way and it kind of became boring to me uh they did like a a one-off like a one shot marvel one shot thing where it it, um i don't know if you've ever watched those but also are like little shorts with like side characters from the main movies yeah um yeah and they did one with her and she was like badass and you know everyone was kind of being wait with who with agent carter agent carter yeah uh hayley atwell and uh what do you mean they did a one-off i thought the whole show yeah, was like, oh, yeah, that this is what kicked it off was this one shot. Oh, and, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, and it was the same thing. It was, you know, oh, this woman can't work with us. We're police officers, and, you know, she can't go. And so she would have to, like, seek, she would, her and um, Howard Stark would have to, like, secretly go on these missions, and that, that kind of, you start seeing the seeds of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, forming within the, the police department or whatever she worked on. And, uh, and then the, just after that, it wasn't that, and I... Kind of got bored with it, and they canceled it. Well, she died like, well. in Civil War, so and then like, she died hey, in Civil War. Exactly. Alert. Yeah. Well, everyone should have seen it. By now. Yeah, dude, the movie's made more money. <laughs> Not to, okay, here yeah. we go. We're gonna shit on Batman vs Superman again, but that movie's made more money than Batman vs Superman in like a lot less time. Yep. <laughs> it did it in two yep. weeks. <laughs> so still not as much. But hey, as, that rated uh, Star Wars, right? Batman Superman's coming out. They're gonna make up that money. Are yeah. they gonna do that? Is no. that a? I hope that. I hope not. I I think they just talk about it, but like that's a DVD release. No one's gonna go to the movie to see that, right? Like that'll sell DVDs, but I don't think you're gonna get people back in the theaters for that. Oh, they're talking about releasing it in the theaters, or there's rumors. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. On a similar note, and I don't know if you guys knew, but uh, you guys aren't watching Agents of Shield either. But they had uh, the mocking. Bird and uh, his name was Hunter, this other character. They left the show and they were going to do a spin off. Everybody knew the spin off was coming called uh, Most Wanted, and they're not moving forward with that either. So I think that whole <laughs> sort of ABC thing. I think, well, but I think it's a smart uh, move also, because I really don't care about all that. Like, Shield is like, Shield's good. It's a little, um, I don't know. It's not constantly good. So I watched yeah. like two episodes, and the one I watched, there was a weird monster. It was like the. In Inhuman and uh, yeah, Lash, it was, and I was just like, mm, not really. For me, uh, God, I'll probably watch like the first five episodes of season one, and it reminded me of like Heroes, but wasn't as cool. <laughs> like yeah. you know, I mean, the effects weren't that great, and. It seemed like they just had like cheesy villain of the week kind of thing going on. Yeah, that's be- uh they did um that came out before Winter Soldier and there was a lot of plot points that they wanted to hit on, but they couldn't because they had to wait for Winter Soldier to come out. But this is a weekly show, so there was just a shitload of filler. And yeah. then Winter Soldier came out and suddenly it was this awesome show and you could see where they were going with everything and how everything was supposed to go. Uh Grant Ward ended up being a, a Hydra spy within Shield. And then um, season two was a little bit the same thing. Like you thought, okay, uh, now that they're kind of not tied down by this movie, they can do their own thing. And they kind of did the same thing that they did in episode one, where there's just or season one, where there was just a lot of slow points, a lot of like serials style television, where like one episode would be, um, no, I guess not serial, I guess episodic. One episode would be just you know start and finish, and just- you know no. Just put the Mar- just put the Marvel universe on Netflix. Stop. Oh yeah, that's what, that's what I'm know. saying. That's what I'm saying. But like I yeah, like yeah. how the only guest star they had for the movies was it Seif or what? she's like the Samuel L. Jackson guardian. Oh, Samuel L. Jackson was on it once. Yeah, yeah, he was oh. on there one time. Like uh, <laughs> end of the episode, <laughs> yeah, five minutes. 
Oh, he wasn't even on for five minutes. It was, Wait, four... was it just his voice? That no. would be even better. <laughs> no, he no, he came down, and this was like before. This I think this was one. actually an episode right before um, Winter Soldier came out, and he gave he handed over the baton to Coulson in that episode. He said, "Well, you're the director now. I got to go underground to tell everybody I'm dead." And then you go and see Winter Soldier, and you see why all that happened and everything. So yeah, it was like kind of it's actually a pretty cool. And the yeah, beginning, who, uh, he tied the whole Marvel universe together to yeah. the Avengers. He's thing. actually really cool. Like, he lost his hand, and then uh, he got, like, a robotic one. And he can, like, um, he can Nick Fury? summon... No, Coulson. Oh. Is that who you were talking about, Lucky? Yeah. Yeah. And he can, like, he can, he, he has his own uh, Captain America shield, but it's only, it's made of energy that comes out of his arm. He's like, I thought the the director ah. of Shield should actually have a shield. It's pretty cool. He's That's like, alluding has... to the comic book when Captain America did. Yeah, have... when he got, the... yeah, he had that too. Yeah, I mean, it's I don't know, it's pretty cool. The it's a um, pretty cool show. It's they're just also not moving it to uh, ten o'clock now, so supposedly it could be darker or something. Hmm. Um, Ooh, but now it doesn't have cool. the lead in. Like, there's like comedy or something as a show in before it. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah. But, if, it, if it's not really good, it might be on its way out too. But like, what Probably. Justin said, like they should just put everything on Netflix. That's the best place for Marvel. Like, because there's no rating. Uh, I mean, like it doesn't have to be FCC approved. There's no like PG or they just do whatever. And like, like I don't know what Daredevil season two was rated, but like you couldn't show that on TV. No, and not at cost- all. In fact, they kind of like they uh, Mac is in it. Um, and he's got his shotgun uh, axe. It's like a shotgun with an axe on it, just as you would think. And he shot a dude point blank in the last episode on the season finale twice in the chest. And it looked like it, it looked like they forgot to add the effects in. And then I kind of, I immediately <laughs> thought of the time when the Punisher ah. shot that dude in the face <laughs> point blank with a shotgun. Yeah, and, and then you see, see like his half face. of his wow. yeah like caved in. I kind of hate that about. Um... Like modern movies and TV, so like if you watch like stuff from the eighties, it's like they're all shooting like blanks from their guns and stuff. But then like I like if you watch like um what is it the uh on um, oh the dis I'm like the disposables the the <laughs> the um expendables um oh they, yeah they're all just like, like shaking yeah. the gun. Yeah, yeah, and then they just CGI the muzzle flashes in and it is yeah. just dumb. I don't know why it just takes me out of it it just looks one dumb. of my um one of my favorite directors started doing that robert rodriguez and he did it in his once upon a time in mexico and he's like all the dvd extras his dvds were always really cool to buy because he would go into like a 10 minute film schools would be a section on all of his dvds so if you got like el mariachi desperado and then um once upon a time in mexico you can kind of see this evolution happening and in the first one he didn't have a lot of money and he would like do all these tricks where he would have a, he would have like one blank in his gun. The guy would shoot it, and then he would just show that and repeat and have the sound effect to make it sound like it was a machine gun. And then in the second one, he had $5 million, and he had all these squibs and all this stuff. And then in the third one, you just see Antonio Banderas walking around shaking his gun. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, would... <laughs> that that was like a bad evolution, though, because I love yeah. <laughs> the early Rodriguez movies. Me too, yeah. And, and, and yeah, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, there was really... I mean, the movie wasn't bad, but there were some parts of that that really, for me, just was like bad. Like when uh, Johnny Depp's eyes were gone, <laughs> and yeah, and that was all CGI. Yeah, it didn't look good. Didn't look good it's, at all. He has his own. He does everything like himself, and he's got his own company. I forget what it's yeah. called, Trouble Starter or something like that. And they, yeah. you know, it's not like ilm or anything it's like a <laughs> no it's low not. budget no <laughs> you know what i mean it's super low budget it's like some guy working on like adobe after effects it's like... it's robert rodriguez working <laughs> he always on has that big gulp of mountain dew next to him <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you stop sipping that i'm trying to talk to you <laughs> all right well, he literally he does everything himself he does the music he yeah. does editing he does all the effects and shit i'm sure he probably has a team now but he always makes sure it's a small team so he can move quick what's That's the how last always... movie he made they're probably well, Sin City too, I think. But um, did he make? You know, it? he did that. Yeah, and he did that uh, with um, seven. Was, seven people saw it. Yeah, it was I, horrible. I feel like everyone saw the first one, and then not many people at all. No, like okay. literally nobody saw the second one. Well, it, it, there was so much delay that yeah. uh, let's no, release by sequels the time it came twenty out, years apart. <laughs> yeah, 
By the time it came out, nobody cared. And he had like, oh, plus I, he had that spirit in between that probably soured everyone, like Frank Miller. Yeah, oh, that that's style. True. Yeah. Well, he did that with uh, Quentin Tarantino. Those, those like, um, what the hell was Grind it called? Grindhouse, Planet, Grindhouse, Terror. yeah, Planet yeah, Terror, and Rodrigo, it's not Frank Death Miller. Proof. Oh. Yeah, those are really good. I love those. I have those. On Me too. Those are fun. Oh, those when uh, films. when um. What's that? Uh, Kurt Russell. He's gonna be in Guardians of the Galaxy when he eats those nachos <laughs> in the bar. Oh, it just makes me crave nachos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about or not? He's like, you know, there's other things in the bar besides alcohol. He's just like people. These nachos, and he's like eating them and like wiping his face off the napkin. You just hear him crunching like he's eating air crisps. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Air crisps. <laughs> crisps. <laughs> it's the best. I'm like, well, I'm gonna get nachos after this. But. So yeah. do you guys want to get into? Do you guys want to get into Ant Man? Yeah, do you have time for that. We oh, well, there's one piece of news. I guess they're developing um, possible Ghost Rider, Moon Knight, and Blade on Netflix. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, I would be really ex- I, okay. So for, j- probably just from an aesthetic standpoint, I really want to see Moon Knight. Yeah, yeah. He's like Marvel's Batman. Yeah, that, and like that's him. right, and that's probably why. Wait, but there's different uh, iterations of Moon Knight, right? There's I'm not as familiar with them, but isn't one of them like crazy? Oh, I'm not at all. Other ones. Yeah, I think he's yeah he's got split personalities and he's able to like mimic people. We'll get back to you guys styles. next week on Moon Knight. Yeah, <laughs> and when, on on next week's episode of the Best Friends Podcast, we will know about Moon Knight. <laughs> and, and Jimmy <laughs> Paul, it's, it's better than us just wondering out loud. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, he seems awesome. So I don't know. I mean, he just looks cool. So I think that I would like Moon Knight. Um, I just remember at Moon Knight that my my biggest Moon Knight memory was um, when Stephen Platt used to draw him, and like the Stephen Platt covers was like really super detailed inking and stuff. Yeah, well, like like Scott Williams on steroids. Like it was just cool. Anyway, uh, David Finch also drew uh, some. Runs on Moon Knight. And... Director? No, no. Oh. <laughs> I was like, no. man, what a career no. change. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's done a lot of Batman work too, so uh. there's more parallels than between you know uh. your your Batman and Moon Knight comparisons. Because, uh... but anyway, he's one of my favorite artists, and he's done some Moon Knight work. So um, maybe we'll hook up some Comicsology Moon Knight stuff. Ooh, I know. If it was on idea. sale, I'd definitely buy it, but uh, we'll see if there's a good collection. So, yeah, that would be a cool uh, thing to bring to Netflix. It was uh, Moon Knight. You said it was uh, Ghost Rider. Blade. Was the other one. Oh, Blade, of course. Blade, yeah. Blade would be awesome. Do you guys... Did, did he... I, this, okay, never mind. I'm not even going to bring it up. It's a vague no, memory. That, one, that, he had, <laughs> that he had a TV show on Spike. There was a TV a show, but it wasn't okay. Snipes. It was some No, other it wasn't character. at all. I remember watching that, and then I just I don't remember ever stop watching it. Oh, or, I don't remember know, it being it good. Away. I remember seeing an episode and be like, "This isn't as good as the movie." Yeah, but it had the it had the bone the um I don't know kind of the advantage of being the only <laughs> superhero show on the on TV. At Actually, the time, at the so. time, I guess it was. Yeah, I remember seeing Blade in theaters. It was awesome when uh, me too in the dance club. It's like. Music, and then he's just like Sing it, killing lady. all these vampires. Like, there's no lyrics, but there's <laughs> weird lyrics. But that's like NIN Nine Inch Nails era, yeah, electronic shit. But I thought those movies um, were good. They were good until the third one. Third one, the yeah. One. If you go the online, on YouTube, sweet. just YouTube, um, Patton Oswalt Blade Three. Him ranting about working on Blade Three is awesome. <laughs> it's like basically Wesley Snipes like went crazy during the shoot, and he would just stay in his trailer and smoke weed. And he <laughs> had everyone refer to him as Blade. He answered to Wesley, and like he, he like him and the director got into a fight, and he would just give the director post it notes. Like he wouldn't talk to him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Gotta listen to it. I'll, I'll put a link up. Some I'll put a link up on the the Facebook page. But it's hilarious. Um, He's nuts. I was just checking out Blade on IMDb and uh, found out that uh, David Goyer wrote that. So David Goyer, who wrote Batman, Man of Steel, Dark Knight Trilogy, uh, Batman Mm. versus Superman. Um, Yeah. Everyone has a little blemish on the old resume. (laughs) (laughs) 
I love how Blade is. He did Blade the TV series too, by the way, a couple of episodes <laughs> anyway. Um, but it's funny that we're not talking about Blade being the blemish. We're talking about Batman yeah, versus yeah. Superman. So yeah, that's funny. Um, that came out. That third one came out at like a really dark time for uh, special effects too. Just kind of like we were talking about Robert Rodriguez. Where you yeah. watch the first one, there's no CGI. It's just him fighting. The second one, I think the same thing. There was like that uh, dude but with there's the that wonky fight where they're like yeah, in front of the lights it goes into C- like why did they make him CGI? Because him fighting was awesome. I, I, or yeah, he does. Yeah. Great. And then they're and then like, he does that ah. weird CGI backflip, yeah. and <laughs> he's all stretchy and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like the same thing in like the Matrix. Matrix did the loaded. same thing with it's that. Like, why? Yeah. What? What did you? You was good till now. Now you're like, what? That was almost worse because oh. they did it in the middle of the fight scene. They cut to CGI yeah. for some yeah. unknown reason. Just no reason. Like, ugh. it was horrible. Yeah, that was a rough time for special effects because they're like, hey, we got this new thing where we can do special effects on the computer and it's super great. And No, it looks just like people. It'll be better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and it just – we weren't ready for that yet. Yeah, it's only now getting to where I can accept it. You know what I mean? Like you could still sometimes see it. Sometimes you don't even see it. But when you do see it, it's like almost just an art yeah. style. Like you know what? Something. I can bring you back like to Civil War. I don't think Tony Stark wears a costume ever. I think the Iron no. Man is all CGI. Yeah. He just has dots like, on. Yeah. I kind of I want him to have that Iron Man costume because I want to know that it exists. And, I like, think I could get it somehow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think and it's wear just, it around the house. Just I think in the scenes where like, it's on and like the, the close up shots of him in the armor uh, where the, the helmet's off. I think that I think he does wear like. I feel like it's face, and he's in like a green or blue suit or something. You know what I mean? And then they just add I the. I hope not. It's um, like black and gray tights with white dots all oh, over. Oh, I hope. I hope it's not that. I, I think, think in the first. The one, I remember a story. Yeah, I think in the in the first one there was always a story where like he would refuse. He was like, "I have to be wearing the suit or something." So I think early on he was wearing it at certain points because he was then, a method actor. Yeah, and then. <laughs> They just it's probably so much easier that. to not wear it. Cuz you see that one with uh, Don Cheadle and <laughs> that was yeah. the that best was the era of where he was. He could have been the a, best joke that we almost didn't hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a joke sniper, you don't you don't know where I hit you from. <laughs> but uh, a, yeah, there's a Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just I was going to jump back to Blade Trinity for a minute. Uh Triple H was in that Yes, yeah. he was. <laughs> and he had a little dog that was also a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, and so was um, Green Lantern and Deadpool. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds was in it. Yeah. Well. I think that was his first foray into the uh, superhero. Yeah, first. actually, that was. was where he got the Deadpool uh-huh. idea. That's where He was kind of Deadpool, Deadpool in that. Just why is yeah. cracking, lifting weight, and just shooting bows can we and just, arrows? Can we just be honest and say that Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool? Yeah, yeah like, he's Deadpool. and Deadpool is, is Ryan Reynolds. I watched like, Deadpool again, and it, it's great. I know, I did too. And it, Ben, have you seen it yet? By the way, I, like, was, I haven't seen it yet. Come on, dude! If you don't what? see it by next week, you're not going to be on the podcast anymore. That's, guys, what? I'm drawing a line in the sand. What's the matter, guys? Something wrong? Just watch Deadpool, man. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, What's it's wrong? hard because uh, number one, I can't take a kid to see it, and number two, I can't take a sit kid down and have it's on video. Yeah, you that was the original video. problem. The second problem now is uh, I can't sit down late at night and watch it because it's not, you know, it's, it's movie family movie night. I can't sit there and watch Deadpool get pegged. <laughs> Excuses are like assholes, Ben. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> got them and they all stink. Yeah. All right, I'll show Jolie Deadpool. <laughs> You guys are Can't right. You put, isn't there a DVD option? I remember when DVDs first came out. There's an option. It would like you could change the rating of the movie or something. Oh, just, really? I uh, think so. Maybe I'm making that up. Yeah, you head. had DVDs of the future. I don't remember yeah. that. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're making a lot of shit up five, today. Five for you, buddy. <laughs> ten. <laughs> yeah, for you, ten. I just love his stupid lines. Yeah, there. when he when he like when he has to pay his original cab fare, he's like, "That's twenty dollars and sixty four cents," and he's like, "How about a crisp high five? <laughs> and then the guy's just used to pay paid. Yeah, <laughs> crisp high fives after that. <laughs> and uh, and he's like, "I don't carry a wallet. It ruins the lines in the suit." <laughs> <laughs> that movie is just littered with funny oh, parts. Fun. 
his blind roommate that always wants to build IKEA furniture. <laughs> Which IKEA furniture is hard enough to put together if you have working eyes. <laughs> We're just seeing all this and ben, seen all this in GIF form. I was gonna say, suck it, man. GIF. I'm spoiling it, and I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I've had. Yeah, I can't be mad. I've yeah. had all the time in the, the movie world. came out six months ago. Like, yeah, it also made a shitload of money. It's the number one rated R movie. I believe. None of mine. I believe worldwide. Yeah, zero of Ben's dollars. Zero of my dollars. I believe worldwide, and I'm going to fact check myself right now, but I believe worldwide, no. Deadpool has not beaten Batman versus Superman, but pretty close. Deadpool did $762 million and BVS did 870 So if not for trying. He... But this is funny, like the made... Deadpool, though, I was in Target the other day, and like... Uh, like a mom, like someone that looked like a mom was like, oh, I wanted to see that movie. And then she bought the DVD. And I was like, wow, <laughs> holy shit. Moms are like, I, I attempted to buy it. <laughs> it's a new world. The Blu-rays were yeah. sold out. It's a new world. But now that I'm middle age, like me saying a mom isn't much like a 40. Yeah, she's your age. Yeah. She's <laughs> 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 oh, look at that milf i'm like wait i'm like a milf age guy yeah uh, a milf aged like, guy look at that attractive peer <laughs> <laughs> nice. oh that's good that's what i search on on, on x videos search attractive peers <laughs> <laughs> oh the shit that's funny <laughs> Um. Yeah, Deadpool. I've seen it a couple times. We all went back and watched Ant Man, right? Or semi recently. I've watched it a lot of times. Yeah, and yes, I did peanut. see it semi recently. Lucky. I said yes, Peanut. Oh, okay. Sugar, <laughs> sugar plum. Um, but he calls his daughter. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You're like, they're getting ready to fight. I thought you were like having that standoff with the uh, yellow jacket. Yellow jacket. Like, Hi, Peanut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought we were doing pet names for one another. No. Oh. oh. Huh. How dare you excuse me of not watching Ant Man and then not uh, get my Ant Man references? Or... Yeah, I know. Um, well, <laughs> and we did this because, well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, because that was probably mutually our favorite part of Civil War, that that fight scene. Anyway, yeah, uh, was was Paul Rudd as Ant Man. And I think it's like almost universal at this point. Like it's it's like slowly like he's his own. He's got his own cult following from this movie. That's slowly starting to boil up like, right now. Paul Rudd in general is great. Like they even like reference it. Remember that Budweiser commercial with Amy Schumer and uh, yeah, uh, with Seth, Seth Rogen. Oh. Rogen. He's like yeah. I forget what he's just like. Paul. Everyone likes Paul Rudd. <laughs> and Paul yeah. Rudd's like I wasn't expecting this. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But it's and true, then he basically plays the same guy in every movie. He's just like, this is unbelievable. What's going on? Like, <laughs> just like, <laughs> but he just goes in Ant Man. It just worked. He's just like, what? When I was rewatching Ant Man, I like Snapchatted that I was watching Ant Man, and like ten people who I don't know to be comic book fans just replied, "I love Paul Rudd." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like they said nothing about the movie, but I love Paul, <laughs> I love Paul Rudd. Then you'll love (laughs) Ant-Man. So upon uh, a second view or a third or fourth or however many times you've seen it, I mean, did you guys like it more? I think I I liked it more. It's just like the sleeper of comic book movies. It is. It's the the gem of Phase 2. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, man. I mean, think about it. I mean, what what else would be like? Would you consider the gem? Like, you know what I mean? Like something that shouldn't be as good as it is. Guardians of the Galaxy. Gen- yeah, Gardens is the yeah. That's the that's the gold yeah. standard. That might be the gold standard of all of the Marvel movies, or yeah. very well, close to. But when even, I, when even I, Spielberg likes it, he's yeah, like, it's I don't true. Really yeah. like super movies, but that Guardians of the Galaxy is pretty good. Yeah, and Tim or not Tim Gunn, he's on the fashion show. <laughs> I mixed right. up my guns. <laughs> James, James Gunn. Jim Gunn. Jim Gunn. Yeah. Jim Gunn. Uh, James Gunn was all pumped to hear that. I think he said it brought a tear to his eye. That yeah. Well, yeah, the greatest director ever that you watched all his movies as a kid and inspired you to get into filmmaking complimented you. Yeah. I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think I think I would still consider Ant Man like the hidden gem that, because everybody knows Guardians of the Galaxy at this point is an amazing movie. But not at the time. Not yeah, when not it at came the time. Out. And I not would say that. Well, I I don't know. I mean, I I rewatched Ant Man. Um, 
So, and I, Do you I remember t- when they announced the Ant Man movie and the casting? Because I remember Ant Man was kind of like Aquaman, where like one of the directors left, and they're like, "Well, yeah, got that it was like, oh, this is gonna be in trouble. Right, it's gonna be yeah. shit." And then they're like, "We're gonna get Paul Rudd to play Ant Man." You're like, "What?" He's like, yeah, well, that's and funny. Like that's right. not like. And, like, I was super pleasantly surprised by the way everything came out in it. And, like, when they're like, Ew. Michael Douglas is going to be Hank Pym, I'm like, wait, that doesn't make sense. Hank Pym's Ant-Man. How can... <laughs> I like, thought this was going to bomb like, because of all that. Yeah. Like when I Also, out... at that time, Michael Douglas got throat cancer, and he said he got it from eating pussy. So, <laughs> another layer of hilarious. I'm to see a doctor's note, Michael yeah. Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> We talked about it, man. Scribbled poorly at another time, pussy. and and lucky you said that, and that's the first time I'd ever heard that in my life. Do you look it up after? No, but the entire oh. time I was rewatching Ant Man, that's all I could think about <laughs> <laughs> was like Michael Douglas wearing a bib, <laughs> going to town, <laughs> wearing a bib. What? <laughs> yeah, you know why. <laughs> no, that's the way I saw it. Um. I don't know. So for me, I texted you guys this, and maybe I was having a long day at work or something, but the first time I watched Ant-Man, I rented it, and I fell asleep during maybe 10 minutes of it. Yeah, you this, said you fell asleep three times? No, twice. I, I, I've watched it three times, and I've fallen asleep twice during it. And upon like a third viewing where I did watch it from beginning to end without falling asleep, um, it he is exponentially better in Civil War than he ever is in Ant-Man. There's a few parts where Paul Rudd is hilarious and he's Paul Rudd, but I don't think, like, overall, I think the movie's, like, I don't know, it's not, it's okay. It's not a very good movie. I would still rank that very near the bottom of my Marvel list. And, um, but I, I will say... It's that, the least marvel movie. Yeah, almost. I mean, Besides it's... Uh, when he's actually Ant-Man, it's not a typical superhero... Uh, yeah, it's it's not a superhero ish movie. Um, well, yeah, because he's like a thief. Is that what you're? Thinking? Yeah, yeah. But well, like, that... he has a family, and then like the the divorce, and like the, yeah. the custody with a kid. Just the layers that add, where that makes it different to me. But I I like it though. Um, but like, it's just like a totally different kind of superhero movie. Yeah, and and that's the thing. I'm not I'm not shitting on it. Like, it's not the worst movie I've ever seen. But I I I don't care. I would rank it amongst like Thor: The Dark World. Like that's where I'd put it. I don't know if I'd put it down there. Well, yeah, no, I think it's, it's higher up. We can agree it. to disagree on it. Um, I will. Well, say here's that- here's. I thought it was going to be so much worse than it was because at the time, uh, yeah, like we heard Edgar Wright was leaving, and you know, he's, oh, that's right, yeah. everybody was like pumped about it because he just did Scott Pilgrim, and he was he wrote with um, Simon Pegg and all three of those movies, Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead and all that. So I thought, man, this is going to be like the first kind of hiccup that Marvel's going to go through. And also, I thought this is cocky as hell because they just did Guardians of the Galaxy, and uh, I'm like, okay, Marvel's just going to do whatever the hell they want now. I feel like no one's heard <laughs> of Ant Man as well, but like no one heard of Guardians. Yeah, of the that's Galaxy. what I mean. They're just like we're going to make any movie we want now with yeah. any character. <laughs> it's like someone no balls. I'm like, I bet you can't get people to go to see an Ant Man movie. Yeah, <laughs> or yeah. they just pick yeah. <laughs> Avengers names out of a hat. It's like uh, Nick Fury and the Howling Commandos. When uh, who was that? Stan Lee or somebody? When they were like, "This the Marvel method works so well. I'm gonna just write the crappiest comic book and come up with the worst name, and then it sold really well." Nick Fury and the Howling Commandos. Have you ever yeah, heard of that? No, there, no. Sure. Hmm. One of the, one of my favorite <laughs> parts of the movie though is when um, they're having a really earnest moment where Hank Pym's finally telling his daughter how her mom died i was just gonna mention that same scene yeah yes. and like, it's literally, really... that's one of my favorite scenes in it and that 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 to me was the ultimate scene in that movie but there weren't yeah. enough of those type of scenes in it whereas civil war was just littered with that kind of stuff but um they're what? having this real quiet moment she's got tears streaming down her face and paul rudd's like wow this is really special or something like that and uh, <laughs> and he's like just totally ruins the moment he's like wow i really I, I ruined the moment, didn't I? And Michael Douglas was like, yeah, you did. It was just <laughs> And hilarious. it is an emotional scene before he does that. Yeah, it is. But like, also, like, what I love about that scene, too, is, like, they allude to the fact that they were superheroes in, like, the 50s and 60s. Yeah. And so they're, I mean, the, 
um, Ant Man and uh, Wasp is like two of the earliest members of the Avengers. So like, there's no Avengers yet, but it's kind of cool if you think about it. It's like maybe there are other heroes during that time and stuff. But you know, it's kind of cool they're using their superpowers and like stopping nukes and stuff. It's I don't yeah. know. I thought it added another layer to the Marvel universe. So like. The whole time Agent Carter, whatever is going on, Hank Pym's also out there as Ant Man, working as like agents for Shield or or whatever for the US. Yeah, that's. I just think it's kind of cool. That is awesome. That is it, awesome. I think that was um, Edgar Wright's idea. He had this. He started working on this shit in like 2003. Believe it or not, I was kind of shocked by that. But I guess he was a huge Ant Man fan. But uh, yeah, he had this story arc where he just wanted it to be. A standalone, and he wanted to kind of mimic the Iron Man one movie that the success of that. So he didn't want it to tie in, and that's kind of where they had their struggle. And that's why he had to leave. Well, and clearly, uh, I don't know if you guys he knew was this. Wrong on that because if you don't tie it in, then you probably don't get Ant Man and Civil War, which was awesome. Yeah, so, exactly. No offense, yeah. Edgar Wright, but that's but, but that you were Edgar. But yeah, wrong. another thing he wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We need a sound for fun, to do. just the sound we play, just like <laughs> wah, wah, and, a like, <laughs> and a pun. And a pun. Here's one. But uh, yeah, you were talking about how in the '60s, or you know how they kind of allude to the fact that Hank Pym was kind of the superhero of this whole Ant Man thing, and and Scott Lang's just kind of like this ding dong, basically. So he, he, you're right, he isn't as superhero-y. But that was all that was all Edgar Wright's doing, and he left, and they kept all that. But did you guys know that um, after they hired Paul Rudd, they brought Adam McKay on to kind of finish and work on the screenplay? Uh, Adam McKay with yeah, yeah right. so him he, and, did, he did like so, Step Brothers and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, he was like well, we Ferrell's just become best friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, right? In our theme song, so I thought that was cool. Yeah, Paul Rudd and him. Kind of fix the screenplay up, and kind of brought. Well, maybe in that's the, why it wasn't uh, quite Falcon as funny placing. as it could have been. Then, you know, maybe it was too heavy yeah. in some parts. I don't know. I just, I, I hate the villain. That dude is such a cheese ball. I never took that him serious. Or yeah, the, the, yeah. yeah, the actor. He's, the only thing I saw him in before that was uh, what's the Netflix show about the pre- House of Cards? He has yeah, House of Cards. Yeah, he I has have, a just completely think. out of nowhere hatred for Hank Pym. Like he like punches him in the stomach when he has the 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 suit. I'm just like, why is he? Why does he hate him well, so I think they much? Explain it because the pim particles are affecting his uh, his mind. I guess. Remember, he's experimenting with trying to recreate them, and uh, you know his experiments did not go well, to say the least. <laughs> He knows his stuff doesn't work, so he zaps a guy with it and he turns into a puddle. <laughs> yeah, a puddle of goo. It was just, I don't know. Yeah, so much of that movie was like, okay. You know, like. Okay, that part I'll give you. That part, okay. But, like, overall, I thought it was very entertaining, though. And, uh, yeah. I like the weird stuff later, too, like, um, with how they play with the pin particles. And they do that, and it leads into Civil War, and he throws a truck at him. It's like, I thought it was a water truck. But, like, in um, <laughs> Ant Man, like. You know, when they're fight the fight scene, uh, I was I think it was better in the trailer than it was in the movies. It was funnier in the trailer, but like when they're having the fight on the Thomas the Tank engine, yeah, it's then a it train. becomes big, and then the <laughs> ant becomes big, and it's just like crawling out, and then people are like, whoa, what the? F- yeah. That's one messed up dog. <laughs> like I just like it's just, like it's so ridiculous, and then like that would be the natural reaction, which is like Ugh! like disgust and horror, <laughs> <Yeah>. just like, <laughs> seeing a giant, a giant ant, ant. Stuff. Um, and, like him using you know, you know it's a chain tank and stuff oh, that was cool what surprised me about it when i saw it the first time was how they used his shrink ability and his well i guess his growing ability to um you know to get back to normal size but because when i was thinking when it first when they first announced it i was like ah who cares a guy who can shrink you know like it, you know we've seen movies like that and it's not that exciting and the effects aren't going to be that cool but it, they surprised me with how they utilized it like the whole thing where he would like jump through a keyhole and become big again and yeah, I thought that was yeah, really neat. It was a, than I would think. Um, yeah, and that was another of Edgar Wright's ideas. He's like he kind of was mentioning like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and all these things where like being small is kind of like the burden and you can't get out of it, and that's kind of hold the whole story and the adventure. And in this, it's like no, this guy can control it. He can go, you know, he can shrink and get big again, and and then just playing with, around with that dynamic. What it reminded me of was uh, X Men Two with Nightcrawler. How they used his uh, teleporting, I thought that that scene blew my mind, and I feel like Ant Man kind of didn't do it 
as much as Nightcrawler did, but uh, I thought they did a pretty good job with that. You know what I'm saying? No. Uh, well, no, yeah, I mean, they you did. You still disagree. Oh, saying. oh so <laughs> the other thing, and I, I said this, I think, when we originally talked about Ant-Man, like probably on a very early podcast, but um, I felt like the movie was very small, and that's not a pun. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, pun! Pun! Uh, <laughs> um, there, I, you remember when we talked about uh, Batman Returns, and we said that there's like four sets oh, in the entire stage. movie? Yeah, yeah I felt the same like, way about Ant-Man. Like, they're either... The house or at the factory? Yeah, they're in the house or the factory the whole oh, time. Yeah, whatever it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah and so... Actually, yeah, you want to... Um, can I... Is that your thought? Because I want to kind of dive Go ahead. Yeah, little. that's it. Oh, that's one of the things I liked about um, Civil War in that... It was huge. Yeah, and that... This is kind of weird. It's kind of a stretch, but like it felt like a Star Wars movie to me. Like, every time they went to a different place, it yeah. was like to a different planet. Like, Siberia, the hot ice planet. And shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're in Africa or, like, Germany and stuff. But, like, I kind of like there was globetrotting. But I think someone, someone asked us to mention it, and like I, I don't know if I liked it or not when they put the giant letters of Lagos. I liked Cleveland. it. I liked it because Girl. it's so. It, it was I different. Liked it, too, yeah. it was different than You're seeing the little letters or something. Yeah, every movie would do that, like in the bottom corner or just at the bottom of the screen somewhere. And I like that they blasted it across this this the screen. Plus, in a movie that did jump around as much as it did, because yeah, it was in Lagos, it was in uh, Wakanda okay, at the very actually, end, it was in Cleveland, it was in Germany, it was Cleveland in rocks. Russia, um, Bucharest, Bucharest. Yeah, I mean, it was all over the place. I think it was necessary to kind of keep you straight, Queens. Uh, keep you straight about where <laughs> where's the movie currently taking keep place. The Queens straight. Is that what you just said? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Keep your Wachowski brothers straight. Oh, um. <laughs> well, technically, it could still be straight, but they're yeah. they're sisters. And Jenner, that's true. But yeah, <laughs> anyway. Um, so I liked it a lot. I thought that was cool. Um, I was. I thought stylistically, it looked nice too. Yeah, yeah it was it looked cool kind of. I thought it. I kind of thought it was kind of cinematic. Yeah, it was different. Especially seeing it, it on like a big it took screen, me out of the movie or anything. Yeah, yeah. especially yeah. seeing it on a big screen, just. <laughs> You know, you know I what it. gripe I have about um, Civil War? Oh, so, uh, when so he's like, give me, give me forty eight <laughs> hours to bring <laughs> in Cap, and then um, the General Thunderbolt uh, Ross is like, or Senator or Secretary of State or Defense is like, you got thirty six. He's like, okay, and then he flies back. I'm sure he has some sort of supersonic jet or something in the Quinjet, but like. In this time frame bef- between their meeting, he flies to Queens, Queens yeah. meets with Peter Parker, convinces a- to come back, flies back to Berlin, and then they have their fight. And also, during this same time, Makes Cap a has suit. recruited <laughs> Ant-Man and contacted, I- which I guess if he just called him on a cell phone, he could call um, Hawkeye. Uh, uh, Hawkeye. But then Hawkeye had to track down Ant-Man, get him, and fly back to... Berlin. It's like that part just they didn't need to say it only took 48 hours. I think and I don't like how they Yeah, it did kind of make sense. It's like all too fast. Yeah. Like if they didn't say how long it took, I I feel like it was more believable. Just like that's like you got a day to go. All right. That's very nitpicky. I know, that's why I said You would assume that criticism to come from the DC guy. Like, well, the Uh, timeline was shitty. You were like, (laughs) I thought it was great. I don't understand what. Well, I really, I, I really think, enjoyed how quick, how expeditious. The timeline it was. was unbelievable, but like totally, I that was uh, and, and growing. And then yeah. shit. Do you remember uh, in our review with uh, BVS? That was one of our major gripes. Was yeah, how it, was. it would like hop how around quickly. and we couldn't. Yeah, we couldn't keep uh, you know the time straight and yeah, where yeah. the hell people were very disoriented. Again, I, uh, I'm not to jump back to it, but. I think that that three hour cut comes out on Blu-ray and DVD, and that comes out in like July. So like we're only about a month and a half away from that coming out. I think that that comes out, and I'll watch it and say that's the movie it should have been because I think it'll be a little more constructed. I I, I said on our initial review that I thought that it's an editing issue, and I bet you 
dollars of donuts. That's what that I be. hope that it happens be. because I'm going to feel bad when you're like, I just wasted three and a half hours of my <laughs> life. On top of the two yeah. and a half the Shit first again. two times yeah. I saw it. That movie's three hours. It was, it was just movie. longer. No. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's the review. It's like, well, if you've seen Batman <laughs> or Superman, yeah, it's just that, just longer. Yeah. <laughs> just longer. You know how I was uncomfortable Ugh. for two and a half hours? It's 30 <laughs> extra minutes of that. It's just more Zack Snyder. <laughs> it rains longer. Yeah. There's more rain in this one. It's than darker. Ever. There's more time for night in it. It's real dark and nighty. Uh. Oh, you know, I noticed um, I, I noticed there was uh, something in uh, Civil War that I think was a dig at Batman vs. Superman. What do you got? Um, hold on a minute. Okay. Um, there was, uh, I'm trying to remember the scene off the top of my head here. Uh, something Iron Man was, or Tony Stark was talking to somebody and he's like, you got to bring him in. And he's like, well, we don't have poison bullets or something like that to just bring him oh, in. Oh shit. And I thought that that was kind of a call out of like, you know, the kryptonite. Bullets, that, yeah. yeah, the kryptonite bullets that Batman used on Superman. You'd have to watch it again, Mayhaps. but I think I think it's when I think it's in that same Did scene. He shoot lucky. Him with kryptonite bullets in the movie, I thought he used the like, kryptonite grenades or something. Kryptonite or no, gas, grenades. yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. So, but I thought that that was kind of. I mean, they're not going to say kryptonite in the Marvel movie, but I thought that that was kind of like a little bit of a jab. I don't know. Um, I, I thought, and I think there might have been another one that was kind of similar, but. Um, I feel like all it's the Marvel me. jabs are just subtle. Like they don't mention them at all in the movies, but they'll release a shitload of trailers. Yeah, Daredevil two the week <laughs> right off. around it. Um, yeah, Batman's coming out. Like I kind of like that that they're not like, well, well you're not. They think they said the first Spider Man movie. They're like, well, you're not Superman. Yeah, right. That's like, true. I like how they're not doing that, but they're just taking. Kevin they just Sm- know they're better. Right? Kevin Smith was saying on an episode of Fat Man on Batman, he was just saying that. Uh, He's like, it's like Marvel has this really big bag of awesome stuff, and every time DC tries to do something, they're like, oh, a Doctor Strange trailer. Oh, yeah. Daredevil's oh, yeah, coming right. out on Netflix the same time well. Batman vs. Superman comes out. <laughs> yeah, they're just, every time DC, like, I imagine as we get closer to August and uh, Suicide Squad comes out, that's where we're going to get the first, like, full Doctor Strange trailer. Yeah. Yeah, probably. So, um, most likely. Oh, uh-huh. which, by the way, I, I, I rewatched that Doctor Strange trailer, and maybe it's because I've been provided some context from you guys, and and uh, the producer from Batman, uh, Fat Man on Batman, is like a Doctor Strange wizard, and he knows everything about him. Pun. Yeah, that was weird when he was talking Pun. about. It. I was like, why? Why would you pick Doctor Strange to know so much about? <laughs> yeah, I know. It seems like it would be hard to know a lot about Doctor Strange. Yeah. Like, but um, so I rewatched that trailer, and it, it was like I had never seen it before. It was just, I was I watched it. I'm like, wow, this looks fucking awesome. It was a new. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So, so I'm really excited about that movie. Um, cool, you're on board. Yeah, I'm on board. I was on board. I was going to see it anyway. Are you guys speaking yeah. of movies that we might see? We have not talked at all Turtles? about X Men Apocalypse. Oh, X Men. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. See, I didn't even I didn't even mention the movie you're thinking of. Yeah, and to that point, later. Lucky assumed I was oh. talking about the Ninja Turtles, which doesn't come out for like another three weeks. Yeah. But no, this uh. weekend, right? Um, oh, you know, we kind of talked about it. I uh, shit on it a next little weekend, bit. Next weekend, next weekend, twenty seventh. Their reviews are out already, and they're out kind of. I feel like all their reviews are kind of like, eh, it's X Men. Yeah. Yeah, I is it? I I thought. Uh, hmm. well, no one. I feel like no one's given it great reviews. Uh, When's it coming out? Um, next week, the twenty seventh. Oh, Can't it's wait. gonna be it's gonna be tough to follow. Follow Civil War, like hey, we're we we got a movie too. It's our superhero super movie with all of our characters together in it too. So um, yeah, and it's and it's not even that far removed from its release date. It's not even. It's not only following it. It's like within its lifespan still. Yeah, That's well, gonna be rough there's going to be some people in the world who are like, "Hey, I haven't heard, I haven't seen Civil War yet, but I heard it's good. I'm going to go watch that instead of X Men this weekend." Yeah, um, yeah. 
So X Men has uh, ninety six reviews. So you're right about several reviews being out. It's at fifty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, that's worse than I thought it was going to be. I thought it'd be like ouch seventy four or something like that. No, fifty. I'm gonna go see it. I don't know. I don't know. I'll 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 hold my thoughts on that until after I see it. But I think it'll be. I good. think even like even the last X Men movies I've seen on video. I'm I pumped go to see to like I know this sounds stupid, but I'm excited for this one to take place in the '80s because I feel like it's gonna have a lot of references to the cartoon show that I watched a lot of. Mm. Like Jubilee's, and in you'll it. know. I'm pumped about. Yeah, Jubil- I'm, I'm excited fun. for Jubilation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jubilation. <Lee. laughs> That's her full She's name. actually in the second one, maybe? Second or third one? Oh, that's she right. She's just like a little student right. with big hoop earrings. Yeah, she doesn't do anything, though. It doesn't uh-huh. count. No. Yeah. Good um, casting, though. What's her power? Just fireworks? Yeah, like little sparkly She's like, she's not Dazzler, but she... I think, I think her biggest had... strength is her friendship with Wolverine. That's true. That is like, also you know, a power in itself. Hey, maybe that's yeah. why he shows up in this movie. Ah, maybe. Ah. Well, see, they kind of they kind of switched that out with Rogue in the movie world. Rogue's yeah, but this is uh, you're on the Days of Future Past timeline. Things are weird. Now. That's true. Yeah. You're true. I don't know what the fuck's yeah. going on. You're right. <laughs> we shall see next week. Are you guys going to see it in theaters? Ah, probably not. I'm not going to run to the theaters. If someone asks me to go, I'll go see it. But I'm not going to go. By myself to go see it. On next week's The Best Friends podcast, Justin's solo review. Of- <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next week to find out which best friends went to see X Men yeah. Age of Apocalypse. Or it's just Apocalypse, it's not Age of Apocalypse, right? Right, yeah. no. It's not yeah. Age of Ultron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah even that, now, in hindsight, that's even more worse of a misnomer. There's no Age of. They could have just called no. it Ult- Yeah, the Age of Ultron was like a week long. Yeah. That's not long yeah, enough for maybe. it to be. Maybe. If, if that. I think it was like a day. Exclusively in uh, Sokovia. What was that? Is it almost it occurred almost exclusively in Sokovia? Yeah. It really yeah. did. Yeah. The fictional. I think it was like two days. The Avengers overseas. <laughs> abroad. What, yeah, the Avengers abroad. Eastern Block Avengers. Oh, hey. Uh, I started playing uh, Avengers. Alliance 2. Have you tried it? Just because I mentioned it. Yeah, dude. I And let me tell you about it. I not only... So I was... You know, we were texting back and forth and Lucky was saying that he's playing. I'm like, oh, that I saw it on, uh, you know, a TV commercial or something. I was like, that looked kind of cool. So I'll check it out. And um, I go to download it and it's like, oh, you don't have enough space on your phone. So I'm deleting other apps to download it. And I start playing it, and within like two minutes, I'm like, "This is the worst game ever." <laughs> and I and I deleted other apps for this shit. <laughs> and it's not that it's bad; it's boring it's though. Not much it's, to it, yeah. It's, it's totally it's, turn based. Like, there's I no interaction select, with anyone else. I yeah. select. I mean, does shit per- look cool though? It does look very cool. It, right? does. it probably looks better on a phone than it does on an iPad. I think you so. Can see, like the ugly, um, the like the pixelation. Makeup. It, it's like huh. almost i don't want to say cell shaded but almost cell shaded so it looks very comic booky uh it's which you know that's an adjective it's not cell shaded it's a style it's stylistically like yeah. what do you do you you get characters you fight them yeah if, fight you, you know, play like an rpg and like it's just like yeah. turn based but like even not as well as <laughs> the years of rpg yeah, but even know. not fun yeah it's like I, I'm Spider Man. I select my web shooters. You got it, Spider Man. I didn't even get Spider Man. Oh yeah, I got Dude. Hawkeye. I got oh, Spider Man. Yeah, Haw- I got Vision. I got uh, the shitty Captain America, and then I got the good I got, one. I got, oh, there's a there's two. Yeah, there's so there's like Age of Ultron versions and Civil War versions of all the characters. Huh. I don't even know which one I have. Then it'll tell oh. you. Hmm. If I if I ever play that game again, I'll let you know which one I have. Oh, Do you play? Is it multiplayer or is it? No, it's just like a <laughs> terrible storyline, and you have to like. Read. I'm trying to make. I'm trying to make something out of this here. I'm trying to. Yeah, there's no like some... cut scenes. Like it's just like text boxes that you have to yeah. read, uh, which you don't. You just click through it. And who like... wants to read a comic book game? Yeah, <laughs> comic books have almost no reading involved. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> listen, Lucky, Lucky said it best. Uh, play it while you're on the toilet until your legs go numb, and then you're done. <laughs> <laughs> I already, that like, eat useful, it though. all, so now I'm, like, going through the heart. The only way, way I'm, reason I'm still playing it, like, it's just the like, addictive nature to unlock more characters yeah. or up them and stuff. Because I just got the Hulk, and now I can be like, yeah, well, I have a Hulk. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> the only reason I'm playing. Oh, I have the Hulk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we have a Hulk. <laughs> do uh, do they do they do like cool? They, like, all their their moves look cool and stuff. No, uh, it's, it's like I, uh, it's like it just sounds, not words. <laughs> all right. How well, few? How few? Well, I'm, uh, I'm sold. How few cells can you animate something? Yeah, like that's what it is. Like, uh, like I want. I guess there's some cool Captain America combos and like their references to stuff they did in the movies. Um I don't know. It's all right. <laughs> you know what I wish they would make? Uh, are you guys into fighting games at all or not? Sure. I wish like, they would yeah. make the new uh, a new Marvel superheroes game. Like uh, Marvel versus Capcom. Yeah, that game was amazing. Exactly like that. That's yes. what I'm thinking. The third one. I wish they made a new one because I, I don't know say if that was like on PS2 and ever. Xbox, right? Uh, PS3 is the last one, so uh, that okay. is Xbox. You what? know what's a real bummer? Uh, Street Fighter Five is on PS4 only, and I. Oh, it is. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, dude. I... Oh, that came out f- five months ago. <laughs> and no, I just didn't buy it because get the... on the. Stick. I used to buy all the other ones, <laughs> and then um, then they just keep upgrading it, and you're like, well, I have to buy a whole new game for like three characters. Like, what the fuck? Is that ever coming same... out on Xbox One? Because if it's not, that might be. I might buy. A, I might have to get a PlayStation for that game. Well, if you're gonna PlayStation, and then just wait a few months because they're making a PlayStation Four Point. I know. You can get uh, 4K graphics on it, but now it's like, what am I supposed to do with my PlayStation Four? Is this a piece Throw of shit it in now? The garbage. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that game was awesome, and they hit all the beats. Okay, and then they used that whole series of games amazing. But the third one, when they made it um, with the polygon graphics instead of the cells, it was they did it right. The fourth one, and, yeah, yeah. Or is it the fourth one? yeah the fourth one? So. And then yeah. they had all of the um, the voices from the cartoons and stuff. I know. So the Wolverine you grew up with was still the voice, uh, and it was just awesome. I wish they made another one of those. Because like then you got the cool DC and Justice one, but now they're not making a Marvel one anymore. And then also the Marvel one had like all it was the X Men, Avengers, everything. So, wow. Yeah, it would be cool. I'm wrapped. I I... Yeah, you're gonna go to the Cavs game. No, I'm gonna watch it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Who are they playing? Toronto. Oh. Hi, welcome to the NBA, Lucky. I'm not a big NBA. <laughs> okay, we don't have NBA. To, if there was no NBA team in Cleveland, would you still watch? If you don't have LeBron, would you still watch? Uh, Those are two separate questions. Yeah, so would I watch if Cleveland didn't have a team? Would I watch NBA? Yes, but not as religiously. And would I still watch the Cavs if we didn't have LeBron? And the answer is yes, because we didn't for four years, and I did still watch the Cavs. Okay. Through My all answer's of their no to both. Fifteen win seasons. Um, What'd you say? My answer's no to both. Ah, you guys are both turds. Yeah, I'm a turd. I, I really like. I can only take like I watch the Browns when they're mildly good. And why that's would you? It. Why would you do that? What a big waste of time. Watching the Browns. <laughs> it, yeah, it is. They're the worst. They are. Even the Bills they're are the better, and they're not good. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> You had yeah, but that's it. Like football's it. like improperly. Old Mike. I just what, uh, what I'm saying is just like football is kind of the sport that I, I'm kind of dedicated to. Basketball, I'm excited about because we got LeBron and everything. But when he wasn't here, uh, I'd watch the top ten players. All right, then I'm gonna remember all this shit when we win the championship this year. And you're like, hey, I'm a I'm a Cavs fan. I'm like, oh no, yeah. Ben, you're not going to. I the- saw I saw Ben jump on the bandwagon for the UFC champ. <laughs> Uh, the new heavyweight champ from Cleveland. I saw that, and I'd never heard that you watched I, see it all before. Dude, I watch yeah, dude, yeah, UFCs. I've been watching that since he was forever. at. I don't know. I think he was at the Cavs game, and Steph's like, "Hey, did you see that Michael Stipe was at the Cavs game?" Michael Stipe. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, the, I'm like, who the fuck is Michael Stipe? Stipe. Stipe. Stipe Miocic. 
She yeah. that's well, totally yeah. different than Michael Stipe. Is that really what she said, Michael Stipe? I swear to God, but Michael Stipe is a real person. He's the lead singer for REM or something like yeah. that. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'll give her a little bit of credit, but it, it was a hilarious mix up because I'm like, that's not even close. That is funny. I would have lost it. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> like, Does she do that often? <laughs> All the time. It's like, oh, you know my favorite singer, Salon Dijon. Oh. <laughs> Salon Dijon. <laughs> yeah, that hit from Titanic. Yeah. Yeah. Salon <laughs> Dijon. <laughs> um, Salon that, Dijon. That and um It's a P. Oh, home. this is a shit on Steph segment. This is great. Um <laughs> I'll have to tell her to tune in. Uh no, one other funny thing she does, she's notorious for like reading headlines but not the story. So she'll never have facts other than like <laughs> oh, yeah. whatever the headline was. Did she All ask in- you about the headline and then just that's the end of the discussion? Uh Ben and I were talking about this once before, right? Mm-hmm. Ben, tell yeah. that joke from that comedian. I you have to tell your story and then I'll try to remember it. So um Steph was oh god she's like hey uh I, I I don't know I said something about Jamie I was watching like trading places or something like that is Jamie Lee Curtis in that or coming to America she's in one of those two anyway Jamie Lee Curtis was in it and I'm yeah, like trading places dude back in the day what if what, I mean even still like Jamie Lee Curtis what a babe ah, she was on Baywatch and hot, but, oh, yeah. yeah so I'm like Jamie Lee Curtis what a babe and Steph's like oh yeah did you hear she's uh hermaphrodite I'm like no she's not <laughs> like where the fuck did you hear that and she's like oh yeah that's like five years old news like that's old news and i'm like i don't I remember think that's it. true did you i remember hearing that when like, i was like an Akron or something kid on the, like the playground just like she's a hermaphrodite like when um yeah i'm like what's your source where did I, you hear that I'm like oh, she's like uh Uncle Sal or whatever that uh, character from oh, that's that now? Yeah, <laughs> like hey, did you hear about the? Uh... <laughs> oh, you hear about? Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's that's stuff. Ben, do you remember that joke now? Yeah, it was uh, the comedian was talking about his dad, and his dad told him that Richard Gear was gay, uh, or Greer. What is it? Gear Greer. Gear. Yeah, and uh, so he went throughout his whole life telling everybody, everybody he met, he would say, "Hey, you know uh, Richard Gear's gay," and uh, he would go around telling everybody. And then uh, he told like his wife or somebody, and his wife's like, "No, he's not." Like, what do you mean? Like, no, he's not gay. He's like, "Well, my dad told me that like ten years ago." He's like, "Well, your dad was wrong." So he looked it up. He went on the computer, looked it up. Ah, he's not gay. So the next time he Louis- sees his dad, huh? Was this Louis C.K.? What's up? Was no, I, I I forget the dude's name. It was he was on Netflix, and uh, he tells uh, he goes back to his dad and he says, "Hey, you know." Uh, you know Richard uh, Gere's not gay. I've been telling everybody that. He goes, "Oh, thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> thought he was." Oh. But yeah, people do that. All right. Well, that does it for this week's episode of the Best Friends Podcast. Tune in next week to find out if anybody saw X Men Apocalypse. And uh, we'll probably hey, who the hell's, who the hell's Moon Knight is. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna know things about Moon Knight next week. And I'm gonna study chibi characters. Doesn't like Moon Knight sound like something a kid would say? It's like ah, oh, tonight's a Moon Knight. Look at it. <laughs> it's full Moon Knight. It's a Sunday. <laughs> moon Knight. It's a Sunday and a Moon Knight. Sun- a moon Knight. <laughs> Yeah, so this this was basically like a prequel episode of the Best Friends Podcast. We're like, tune in next week, because next week, that's the real show. We're back with a real episode on a real day, and a, <laughs> with real news. We and, gotta do next yeah. week's show after Wednesday, though, so we can talk about comic books. Okay. DC Rebirth, man. We gotta, we oh, gotta, now when your comics okay. come out, we want to talk about yeah. We want to talk about comic books every Wednesday that... We read all, all our comic books just 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 for Justin and Rebirth. Well, listen, uh, let's next week's well, going to be a very comic book centric episode because Ben nice save yeah yeah see what I did there because Ben has been reading the hell out of Spider Verse and then Lucky yeah. you've been reading the hell out of everything that doesn't have superheroes in it and superheroes. Okay. Speaking of which, Joe Hill, there's a Joe Hill sale on Comicsology, which is lock and key. Speaking of non superhero comic books, great comic book. And I want to talk about Hello? rebirth. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? I want to talk about rebirth. Rebirth. I'm gonna mm-hmm. tell you all about rebirth next week. Is after, that the it's after, dropping the after rebirth, the afterbirth? That's copyright, Lucky <laughs> Pratt. Uh-huh. 
I stole that from our own Instagram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that Lucky posted. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll bring that back next week. Thanks for listening. Bye. Excelsior. We did it. Yay. <laughs>If you just can't get enough of the Best Friends podcast, be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at TBFCast. Like our page on Facebook at facebook.com slash thebestfriendspodcast. Subscribe to our new YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com and search for, you guessed it, The Best Friends Podcast. And as always, subscribe to our weekly show on iTunes and SoundCloud. And we'll be saying, did we just become best friends? Yup.